I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a test question on optimization application. The question here is, a prism has surface area of 192 cm square. Determine the maximum possible volume if the base is a right isosceles triangle. Four choices are given to you. You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now let's try to sketch and then we'll try to derive a formula for the prism with right isosceles triangle. So here is an isosceles triangle and uh, let's make a prism out of it. So, okay. So that seems to be a prism. We know that surface area of this prism is 192 centimeter square. We need to maximize volume. Now let us say that height is h of the prism and let us give side length of a to each side of this isosceles triangle. Now what is going to be the other side? Let's call this as b. Now from Pythagorean theorem, we can find what b is. b is equal to square root of a square plus a square. Since the triangle is right isosceles, that means we have a right angle right there. Okay. So that gives us the side as 2a square or we could write this as a square root. So that becomes this length. Now surface area could be written as 2 times the area of these two triangles since we have two triangles here. So 2 times half of base and height could be considered as a and a. So we get a square plus we have three rectangles, right? So this is one rectangle base times height. So let's call this as b is a square root 2. Let's write b base time height plus the other two are a times height. So let me write this as 2 times a h. So that gives you surface area formula. Now the idea here is to write this formula in one variable. We have three variables in this case. Since we know what surface area is, we could substitute 192 for that. Now half and half and 2 cancels, we get a square plus base is a square root 2. So I'm writing uh, square root 2 and then a and h. 2 times a h, so plus 2 times a h. So we have already taken away b by substituting a square root 2. Now we can isolate h. So that gives us, uh, let's write this as 192 minus a square equals 2. Now in this formula, we can actually take a h common. So if I take a h common, I'm left with square root 2 plus 2. So we can isolate h, right? Dividing by the term a and square root 2 plus 2. So what we get here is 192 minus a square divided by a times square root 2 plus 2. Now this is equal to h. What is volume of such a prism? Volume is area of base times height. Now area of base is half a square, right? And height is h. We can always write height as shown above. So that gives us volume as half of a square times all this, which is 192 minus a square divided by a times square root 2 plus 2. 
Now from here we can simplify a bit. We can just cancel these two. And what we get is volume as a function of one of the sides A, which is if you open the bracket, or let's multiply like this, 192A minus A cube divided by 2 times square root 2 plus 2. Is that clear? So we have a relation of volume. So we have volume as a function of side A, which is 192A minus A cube over 2 times square root 2 plus 2. Right. So that becomes the relation of volume with one of the sides. Now to find the maximum volume, we can always differentiate this with respect to A. So we'll take derivative with respect to A to find critical number, right? So let's do it in the next page. So we have the expression for volume as a function of side of the isosceles triangle as 192a minus a cube divided by a constant term which is 2 times square root 2 plus 2. We can differentiate volume with a. So what do you get? This is a constant. Let me write it as such. 2 times square root 2 plus 2. And here we can write the derivative as 192 minus 3a square. Okay? So that becomes the derivative. Perfect. For critical number, dvda should be equal to 0. So that means this portion 192 minus 3a square equals to 0. Perfect. Now from here we can always find what a is. So 3a square equals to 192 and that gives you a as square root of 192 over 3. Now this is, let's divide. 192 divided by 3 is 64 and square root of 64, you know, is 8. So we get 8 as the value of A. Correct? So we have found the value of A. And now we can calculate what maximum volume could be, right? Now in this example, it is very important to also understand that what could be whether this critical number is a maximum or not, right? That is kind of important to understand. So we could actually find the limits of A using this particular volume expression, which is 192A minus A cube, right? So uh, from here, we can actually get limits of A, what could be the dimensions of A, since volume has to be positive. So let's look into that part also. So basically, 192a minus a cube should always be greater than or equal to 0, correct? So if you factor, you get a times 192 minus a square should be greater than or equal to 0, correct? So that gives you the value of a in between square root of 192. Let's find square root of 192, which is 13.85. So that means the value of A should be, because plus minus and should be less than 13.85 and should be greater than zero, right? So we could say less than or greater, these two values. So these are the extreme values which A can have since this value should always be positive, right? So that gives you restriction on A. So we can actually also find volume when A is 0. So we know from here, volume when A is 0 is 0. And if I write 13.85, then also it will be 0. So whatever we get here will be a maximum. Perfect. Since we know volume at 0 will be 0, 
and we also know that volume at 13.85 is also zero right so this value the volume at a equals to 8 should be maximum correct so we are going to substitute 8 here now and calculate so if I substitute 8 I get 192 times 8 minus 8 cube divided by 2 times square root 2 plus 2 so let's calculate this answer so this is positive right so it is a maximum value we get it from extreme value theorem so we have 192 times 8 minus 8 cube 1024 and we are going to divide this by 2 square root 2 let's put them in bracket right 2 square root 2 plus 4 bracket close equals to and we get a value which is 149.96 so that's the value we get. Units are centimeters, so it'll be volume will be centimeter cube. And this can be approximated to 150 centimeter cube. Correct? So looking into our options, we get our answer as, as option A. Right? So option A is the right option. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. First, we have to derive an expression in terms of one of the sides or in one variable for the volume, which we did using the given surface area. And then finding the derivative of volume with respect to that variable, A in this case, we find the critical number and the volume is maximum at that critical number since at both the extremes volume was zero so anywhere in between we are going to get at a critical number maximum volume right so i hope that helps so that is how it should be solved feel free to write your comments and share your views if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best